Welcome to the Backyard Bourbon Broadcast. This is episode 32. In this episode, Jeremy reviews Slaughterhouse and Straight Edge whiskeys from the Splinter Group out of Napa Valley, California. He also goes on a slight rant real quick. This is episode 32 of the Backyard Bourbon Broadcast. Welcome to the Backyard Bourbon Broadcast. How y'all are? Hey, it's been a while since our last podcast. You may or may not have noticed, but it's been absolutely crazy around here with people's schedules and those of you with kids in middle school, junior high, high school, you know what I'm talking about. The end of the school year, they decide to cram all the events into one week, dance recitals, concerts, championships, etc. All gets thrown into the mix. Uh, on a more emotional note, my grandmother passed away um, two weeks ago, and... Um, you know, we, we knew it was coming soon, but uh, it's always too sudden when it actually happens. And so uh, that is that is something we'll cover in a different episode. But in this episode, we are sampling and reviewing the Slaughterhouse and Straight Edge bourbons from the Splinter Group out of Napa Valley, California. But first, a rant. Can't listen to this podcast without a rant, right? You ever hear people say it's not always about money? Sweetie. I'm a dad of two teenage girls. Let me tell you something. It's always about the money around here, okay? Everything costs way too much, and I make way too little, okay? Ask any dad, and he'll tell you if it can't be done for free, you have to wonder if it's worth doing at all. Think back to your childhood. Whenever you tell your parents something, your mom would go, When does it start, sweetie? Or, Do you need new shoes for it? Your dad would ask one question. Just one question. How much does it cost? And then you go off mumbling to himself, wondering how he's going to pay for it. Mom finds a swing set on sale. Oh, the kids would love that. Of course they'd love that. They're not footing the bill. Dads are like, I've worn the same socks now for eight years. Anyone notice? No one remembers we never have the money for a $7 five-pack of tube socks at Ross. But sure, an $800 swing set? Sure, no problem. They'll even engrave the seats for an extra $800. Sure. Here's the thing, the it's not always about money defense normally comes from people with way too much money as it is. Let me tell you something, when you don't have enough money, it's always about the money, sweetheart. Here endeth the rant. Okay, so I finally got to the samples I'd been sent from the nice people at Splinter Group. So a little about um, Splinter Group. Uh, renowned winemakers and whiskey aficionados. Steve Mathiason from Mathiason Wines and Bob Cabral, formerly of William Salem, are part of the team, continuing the legacy of winemaker crafted spirits. Both winemakers have achieved Winemaker of the Year honors. Mathiason from Food and Wine Magazine in 2012 and the San Francisco Chronicle, Chronicle in 2014, and Cabral from the Wine Enthusiast of 2011. Cabral is also noted for having made the first American. Pinot Noir to be awarded 100 points from a major wine publication. What follows are parts of the audio that I recorded as I sampled both Slaughterhouse and Straight Edge. Now, I'm going to make you listen all the way to the end for my review, but here's a hint. The words interesting and unexpected keep coming up as I sampled these samples. Straight Edge. Jacob Greyer, a distiller. Maybe it's Jacob Greer. With oak and vanilla on the nose, it's remarkably remarkably soft on the palate, remarkably sweet, but backed by enough proof to provide a long honeyed finish, a delicious bourbon. Top selling points are a blend of five, seven, and eight year bourbon from Kentucky and Tennessee, tamed with spring water from Alexander Valley, 84 proof, 70% corn mash bill, 17% rye, 13% malted barley. So it's a rye. Ooh, gimme. Additional mellowing in experienced French oak Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Experienced. So those barrels get around a little bit. Thank you. I'll be here all the week. Boy, they're able to pack quite a bit in that little bottle. Well, it smells like bourbon. Getting that caramel, strong caramel. That is interesting. That is interesting. It does not... 
you can you can taste the the wine barrels almost immediately. It does not come off as a a, a bourbon burn. You know what I'm saying? Very different finish. Very very different initial taste on your tongue. Wow, that is that is an unexpected initial taste on your tongue. I can really taste the spring water. That's interesting. Huh. Okay, so that is the straight edge. Let's go with the slaughterhouse. I don't know what's with all the blade word imagery, but it shows it's gold medal best in class, but doesn't say where from. Dave S Douglas Smith of Whiskies of the World says, being recognized as a winner is an, an extremely prestigious accolade and one that many in the industry strive to obtain. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is a higher proof. This is uh, matured nine years. 88 proof. So it's 44% alcohol mash bill. 85% corn, 6% rye, 8% wheat. So it's a little more weeded, 1% malt barley. Additional mellowing in experienced French oak Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Again, they are experienced. They're getting around. They're the uh, barrels of ill repute, if you will. Uh, highly sought after whiskey. Similar fragrance. Almost identical. Let me compare it to the other one I have. Whew, man, there's an. It's weird. The uh, the slaughterhouse has a higher alcohol content, but I am picking up more of that bourbon. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's the grain that I'm picking up that is very strong in the straight edge. So, okay. Slaughterhouse, American whiskey. That is interesting. I don't. I don't pick up anything strong. There, there's no overbearing taste on it. I will say this, I am picking up that spring water. If they use that in in um, the slaughterhouse as well, it doesn't say that they did necessarily. It's got great hints of uh, caramel again. Yeah, the huge. There's something else I'm picking up there. I think I, I'm going to guess it's the spring water. You know, the slaughterhouse is very smooth. Very smooth. I mean, almost wine smooth. And maybe the, it's picking up that from the um, Cabernet ba uh, barrels that it's been placed in. So maybe that's mellowed it out a little bit. But it was not that way with the straight edge. So I don't know why that would be any different. Okay, I don't know. I, I don't know about the slaughterhouse. Um, I wouldn't turn it down. I'm just... Hmm. Boy. There is something... There is something consistent between both the Slaughterhouse and the Straight Edge. They are... They are consistent in their taste. And I just have to assume that is part of the, um, spring water that they're using for these. So like I said at the beginning there, the words interesting and unexpected kept cropping up. I've had some time to consider things, and it comes down to this. I don't think those are the words you want to use when you're describing a bourbon. There is an overwhelming aftertaste to these whiskeys, and it reminded me of drinking water out of those miniature Dixie cups. Do you remember those? They had a very prominent taste they gave to the water, and it took me a while to realize that's what I'm tasting in these bourbons. I don't know if it's the result of the spring water in use here, or if it's these samples, or if it's the whiskey blends they're using, or maybe all three. I don't know. Whatever it is, 
unfortunately, I just I can't recommend this. Um, I have been really conflicted about this because the folks at Splinter Group were very accommodating to send me these samples, but I don't actually like what I tasted. I always want to be honest with you, the listener, so that is my honest take on those two whiskeys. Again, I do want to thank the kind folks there at Splinter Group for sending me these samples. I appreciate it very much, and good luck to you folks with all of your future endeavors. Well, that'll about do it today for the Backyard Bourbon Broadcast. We do hope you enjoyed today's show. As always, I'd like to thank the Jingle Punks for the music you're hearing right now. You can find their free music on YouTube. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook now. I put a lot of beautiful pictures I take for each podcast on there. I think you'll enjoy them. Well, that's it. God bless. And remember, always pack a towel and whatever beverage you choose to enjoy. Enjoy it responsibly. Also, get your pet spayed or neutered and post no bills. All rights reserved. Cash only. No refills. Signing here is not an admission of guilt. Pedestrians have the right of way. I'm out of order. You're out of order. This whole court's out of order. No shirt, no shoes, no service. The red zone is for loading and unloading passengers only. Do not pass go. Do not collect no $200. Materials are copyrighted and protected by worldwide copyright laws and treaty provisions. They may not be copied, reproduced, modified, published, uploaded, posted, transmitted, distributed, or even looked at sideways in any way, shape, form, or fashion.